What is our idea of a perfect spouse? Does something like that exist, or we are made perfect in our imperfections? In the opening scene of An American in Austin we see Harriet, an aspiring author and a librarian, describing a scene from the novel she is writing. Barely five sentences later, she gets stuck, not knowing where she's heading with the story. At work, a young girl returns a book to the library where Harriet works and requests for her to recommend something she can read. Harriet takes her to the romance book section in the library, and shares how Jane Austen's novel got her through her parents' divorce and every one of her breakups. She is of the strong opinion that the books in that section are revolutionary. She hands her favorite to the young girl, who watches her as she briefs her on the twist in the plot of the story. Harriet turns around with a satisfied smile on her face and sees her boyfriend, Ethan. He hugs her and intentionally says out loud that he's hoping her supervisor Nat won't mind, so he can steal her away for their anniversary dinner. Nat understands that Ethan purposely wants her to hear him, so she will grant his girlfriend permission to leave. Eventually she allows them to go, since they've closed for the day. Ethan made reservations earlier, but when they arrived at the restaurant, they got to sit at a table inside the kitchen. Not satisfied with how their reservation turns out, he intends on going to talk to the management, but Harriet won't have it. She insists their location is perfect. She laughs upon remembering their first date, when Ethan bought them fake tickets and they had to watch the concert from the parking lot. They make a toast to an amazing three years of love. Ethan notices the stress on Harriet's face and asks what's bothering her. She shares her concern about the writer's block she is experiencing, which seems to be taking forever. He suggests she take some time off and go on a road trip. Maybe she will get some inspiration while connecting to nature. Harriet laughs because she would prefer concrete rooms and writing masterpieces in a prison. She reaches out for her phone and realizes that she left it at the library. They head back to the library to get her phone, and everywhere is locked up already. She leads the way inside, but thinks it's weird that the library is locked, because Nat doesn't shut it so fast. Then, Ethan starts playing the guitar, and she turns to see that he set up a surprise for her. He sings and walks around each chapter of stories he prepared to celebrate their anniversary. The light comes on, and Harriet can't help but laugh upon seeing her friends come down the stairs, while others hold some litter balloons. She freezes as Ethan gets to his knees, proposing marriage to her. Then, she gives him maybe as an answer. Later that same night, Harriet laments how she messed up her romantic proposal, and now she's wishing Mr. Darcy from Jane's book would come and sweep her off her feet. The ladies get tired of listening to her imagination. They urge her to get into the cab which just arrived. Harriet sees a shooting star just as she is about to get in the cab, and her friends urge her to make a wish, maybe a do-over or something. They find it unbelievable that she is wishing for Mr. Darcy. So they push her into the vehicle, advising her to go home and consider reality. Harriet falls asleep on the ride home, and she wakes up to find herself in a carriage and the horse neighing. She attempts to speak with the rider, but he encourages her to just take a rest. They arrive at a castle, and Harriet thinks Ethan is responsible for putting them up to this prank. She tries to make sense of the family, and five ladies who come to welcome her and refer to themselves as her cousins. They are all dressed up in traditional English clothes, asking her about the way she's dressed. She compliments them for doing a good job and not breaking character. Then she follows Mr. Bennett, her host, and his five daughters into the house. Inside the house, the ladies inform her of the assembly happening later in the evening in Meryton, which would like her to accompany them. Their mother has been conspiring to introduce them to their single neighbor, who has a large fortune. The younger ladies suggest she wear their eldest sister Jane's dress, as they have almost the same figure. In a few minutes, Jane and Lizzie assist Harriet in getting ready. Harriet thinks the corset thing is unnecessary, but Lizzie feels otherwise, because Jane may have to compete with her to get Mr. Bingley's attention. The assembly soon starts, and the ladies walk in gracefully. Harriet freaks upon seeing that everyone present at the ball is wearing Regency costumes. Jane urges her to be calm, while Lizzie promises her that she will be less impressed when she meets the man their mother intends to introduce them to. She implores her to ignore Lizzie, who is the most cynical person in all of Hertfordshire, and Lizzie gets back at her by calling her the most hopelessly idealistic. Charlotte comes to inform the ladies that Mr. Bingley is around. Lizzie eagerly introduces Harriet to her. Harriet, who still believes this is some sort of joke, thinks that whoever did the scripting did a great job with the name selection. Charlotte shrugs at the way Harriet is acting like everything is strange to her. Mr. Bingley walks in with his sister and some others behind him. Charlotte reveals that the man behind him is the Mr. Darcy she has been telling them about. Harriet is astonished as she tries to make sense of everything going on. The ball starts and Mrs. Bennett rushes to giddy up her girls. Mr. Bingley walks by, and she seizes the opportunity to introduce her daughters, starting from the eldest. The ladies all make a bow to greet him, and Harriet plays along as she smiles, thinking everything is just a big joke. 
Mr. Bingley introduces his sister and is about to mention his friend when Harriet interrupts him and continues the introduction of Mr. Darcy on his behalf. Mrs. Bennet, her girls, and the others look at her in surprise, wondering how she got to know his name and also know that he's from Derbyshire. When the dance begins, Charlotte suggests they ask Mr. Darcy to dance. Lizzie quickly walks over to try, but he keeps a straight face and turns her down without even looking at her. She comes back to join her cousin. Mr. Bingley leaves the dance floor to inform his friend of how magical Jane is, and perhaps, he might be interested in one of her sisters. But Mr. Darcy reveals none of the ladies contempt him, and he thinks Jane is easily the most tolerable of them all. Mr. Bingley sighs and walks away from his difficult-to-please friend. Harriet overhears his last statement and intercepts him immediately after his friend leaves him. She berates him for making such a remark about Jane, then walks back to join the others and leaves him there. Soon, it's dancing time, and all the ladies come out to show their dance skills while Harriet gushes on how good they are at dancing. After the event, everyone returns to their various homes. Harriet walks into Lizzie and Jane's room. The Bennett girls are surprised to find out that their cousin is older than 30 and she's still unmarried. Lizzie gushes at the idea of having the freedom to decide what she wants for herself, just like Harriet has decided not to get married. Judging from the girls' responses, Harriet is beginning to realize that it's not a game, and her current reality might just be real. She confirms with the girls to ascertain that they don't know Ethan, Natalie, or Wendy. Seeing that everything is real and no longer a game, she heads off to go to sleep. Jane thinks she's tired because of her age. The next morning, Harriet jumps out of her sleep as soon as the cock crows. Kitty greets her and shows her some of the dresses she brought for her to try and then drags her downstairs for breakfast. Mrs. Bennet informs her that they will be going to town later, and then cautions Lizzie for not being endearing to her sister, who found a suitor the previous night. They talk about the incident with Mr. Darcy, but Lizzie is in complete disagreement with her mother's statement that love is a luxury only men can afford. She angrily walks away from the breakfast table, and Harriet lets out a wide smile, asking them how long the charade will last. While at the market, Kitty and Lydia gush over Mr. Darcy when he walks past them. Harriet sees a man that looks like Ethan. Immediately she runs after him, but when he turns to face her, she realizes he's not Ethan. The man apologizes to her for not having money. He gives her his hat instead, and informs her that they are in the year 1813. Harriet faints on finally realizing that it's real and not a game. To make matters worse, she realizes that she is stuck in pride and prejudice. Moments later, Jane and Lizzie sympathize with Harriet as they watch her lying helplessly even as she can hear them. Mr. Bennett interrupts their conversation and hands a letter to Jane. Jane excitedly reads out the invitation from Carolyn Bingley. Mrs. Bingley advises her to take a horse ride to Netherfield, and if she catches a cold, it will be a great opportunity to stay a while at the Bingleys. Immediately Jane gets on her way to Netherfield. The next morning, Harriet wakes up to the sound of the cock crowing, and she is frustrated to see that she's still stuck in the Bennets' home. At the breakfast table, they receive a letter from Netherfield informing them that Jane is ill. Lizzie volunteers herself and Harriet to walk down there to take care of Jane. Harriet pleads they go with the carriage instead of walking, but Mrs. Bennet refuses. They arrive at Netherfield after a long walk. Caroline makes jest of their dirty appearance. Bingley soon takes Lizzie to see her sister, while Harriet seizes the opportunity to explore their library. However, Mr. Darcy isn't expecting her to be much of a book lover. He's impressed as he watches her hovering over the shelves. He listens as she reveals how the whole place brings back memories of when she and Ethan started dating and he took her to Burlington, one of the oldest libraries in America. Meanwhile, Mr. Bingley seems to be falling in love with Jane, and he insists that Lizzie stay with them until she gets healthier. He suggests they allow her sister to rest properly, so they get back to join Harriet and Mr. Darcy in the living room. Lizzie joins her cousin on the couch as they laugh silently at the sarcastic responses Mr. Darcy is giving to Caroline, who's trying to get his attention with the excuse of wanting to see his sister. Mr. Darcy turns and tells Harriet that his sister will enjoy her company more than she will Caroline's, because she's a great admirer of America. Harriet laughs, suggesting that Lizzie's company will be great and Mr. Darcy throws one of his taunting answers at Lizzie. They start fiercely attacking each other with haunting replies, until Mr. Bingley interrupts the session and invites them all to dinner. Later at night, Harriet takes a walk around the garden, but Mr. Darcy comes unannounced. He confesses that he would have accompanied her, had he known she had intentions for a stroll. He looks straight into her face and reveals that her mind, white teeth, and lack of decorum fascinate him. Harriet gets tense and brings up Elizabeth into the discussion. She reveals that she always saw herself in Elizabeth when she was growing up. Mr. Darcy finds it odd that she speaks of her cousin, who is 10 years younger than her, in such a manner. He requests to entice her and make her stay behind for another day, so she can watch him write correspondence while walking about the room. Harriet doesn't want to create any emotional attachment with the fictional character she has always loved. So she makes an excuse that she has to leave, because tomorrow is her turn to clean the horse's stables. She quickly bids him goodnight and walks away briskly. Mr. Darcy looks lovesick as he bids her goodnight. 
The next morning, while Lizzie and her sister are discussing the events of the previous night, she confesses she can never find softness for Mr. Darcy, even if he's the last man on earth. Jane smiles, knowing that she's only saying so because of the incident between them the previous night. Harriet moans on the couch where she spent the night, and reveals she needs to tell them something. She joins them on the bed and lowers her voice. Then she looks at the ladies staring directly at her, ready to hear what she has to say. She tells them that she can see the future, but Jane thinks she's going mad. But Lizzie seems to believe her, because Harriet had correctly guessed that Caroline would refer to them as pigs, on the day they arrived at Netherfield with mud on their dresses. Jane suggests they put her ability to the test by asking her questions about things that will come in the future. Lizzie jumps excitedly, because her sister's idea sounds splendid to her. She immediately asks Harriet to reveal who they will marry. Harriet tries to evade the question, but the girls convince her to answer. She reveals Jane will end up marrying Mr. Bingley. Lizzie's face turns sad on hearing that she will end up marrying Mr. Darcy. This is not what she had been expecting. She walks out of the room angrily, while Jane is bubbling with excitement. The Bingley family gathers outside the castle to see the Bennet daughters off, because Jane has recovered fully. Mr. Darcy gifts Harriet the book she showed an interest in and then bids her farewell. In the next scene, the remaining members of the Bennet family welcome their girls back home. Mrs. Bennet excitedly hugs Jane on seeing her, while Mr. Bennet informs everyone that a special guest in the person of Mr. Collins, the heir to the Bennet family estate, will be joining them for dinner. An awkward silence passes at the dinner table, with everyone carefully eating their dinner with Mr. Collins. He continues to ask unending questions about the estate, and compliments how well Mrs. Bennet has done in maintaining the property, such that he didn't see any damage on the walls. The girls make eye contact and try to control their laughter at how Collins is so inquisitive about the estate. Mrs. Bennet interrupts him the moment he expresses interest in Jane, informing him that she is soon to be engaged, so he might want to consider the second eldest, which is Lizzie. But she intentionally tries to irritate him with the way she is eating. Collins isn't interested in Lizzie, so Mrs. Bennet shows him the next daughter, which is Mary. They conclude Collins and Mary's marriage discussion. Harriet tries to dissuade Collins from marrying Mary, but Mr. Bennet wouldn't have him paying attention to her. Harriet tries to discourage Mary from marrying Collins, but she insists that Harriet doesn't understand what responsibility is. Besides, she needs to secure her family's heritage. Later on, the ladies are at the market when George Wickham, an officer, joins them. Mr. Bingley and Darcy soon join them also, inviting them to the ball that will be happening in Netherfield tomorrow. The ladies are excited to hear that the Duchess will be in attendance. Kitty informs Bingley that she wants Wickham to be in attendance, and he agrees. Mr. Darcy recites a poem he was inspired to write, and he attributes his inspiration to Harriet for bringing out the poet in him. They split up, leaving Lizzie, Harriet, and Wickham. Harriet asks about the tension between him and Mr. Darcy. Wickham informs her that the tension started after Darcy's father left him a larger share of his inheritance than he did to his son, because the old man loved him so much. However, Darcy ended up stealing his shares and since then, they've been at loggerheads. Harriet outrightly disagrees with him, stating that he spent it all and became greedy for more, which led to Darcy cutting him off. Lizzie gets pissed at her for accusing Wickham of lying. She walks away as soon as he leaves them. When they return home at night, Harriet goes into Lizzie's room to apologize for unintentionally hurting her feelings. Lizzie reveals how displeased she has been ever since Harriet foresaw that she will end up with Darcy, and now, she embarrassed her in front of Wickham. Harriet feels sad, but then she informs Lizzie that she's aware of certain things, and Wickham will not attend the ball tomorrow. She stands up, picks up her candle, and walks back to her room, muttering under her breath that she's destroying Jane Austen. The next day, Mrs. Bennet and her girls attend the ball. She introduces them to the Duchess one after the other in order of their age and lastly, she introduces Harriet. The Duchess compliments Jane and reveals to them that she thinks Bingley organized this ball just so he can have another opportunity to meet with her. Mr. Bingley soon joins, asking Jane for a dance with him. The Duchess and Mrs. Bennet share a knowing smile as the lovebirds move away from them. Lizzie runs around in search of Wickham. Collins, who also can't find Mary, asks about her from Lizzie, Harriet, and Charlotte. Harriet seizes the opportunity to derail his attention from Mary as she sets him up with Charlotte. Immediately Collins and Charlotte leave for the dance floor Lizzie yells at Harriet for meddling in the affairs of others. The Duchess welcomes everyone to Netherfield and officially opens the dance floor. After the first dance, Wickham shows up, contradicting Harriet's prediction. Harriet, Lizzie, and Darcy apprehensively rush toward him. He takes Lizzie's hand and requests a dance, while ignoring Harriet's question about why he is at the ball. A few minutes later, Mr. Darcy approaches Harriet in the library and pleads with her to permit him to confess how bewitched he feels after meeting her. She runs around the library, but Mr. Darcy maneuvers and seizes the opportunity to profess his love for her. She becomes emotional, because the moment she has always dreamt of is right before her. Mr. Darcy's proposing marriage to her finally becomes a reality. But now that it's happening, the feeling she's having right now isn't exactly what she has always dreamt of, because she has now realized that she's in love with another man. 
Mr. Darcy feels disappointed that she is turning his proposal down, and she's even suggesting someone else to him. In his gentlemanly style, he takes his leave gracefully. Harriet comes out of the library, looking downcast. She sees Lizzie and Wickham talking in a corner. She approaches them, dragging Lizzie away to have a word with her. She admits she has indeed been meddling, which she apologizes for. Harriet tries to convince her to see that she's giving up on her real self, but Lizzie is determined not to listen to anything she has to say. She angrily walks out on Harriet. Later in the night, Harriet sits by her window, looking into the starry night sky. She starts talking to the sky, admitting her errors and believing all she needed was a perfect man, just like the Mr. Darcy she had envisioned. She pours out her heart into the night, scared that it might be too late for her to get to see Ethan, or have the opportunity to tell him how much he means to her. She pleads to no one in particular to let her go back home, and thanks the night for listening to her. The next morning, she wakes up to the cock crowing, like she has been doing the past few days. She steps out of her room to find Mrs. Bennett running after Jane, who locks herself in her room, because Mr. Bingley has left and Caroline is making plans for him to marry Mr. Darcy's sister. She finally opens the door to Harriet and Lizzie after several pleas. Harriet suggests she go to London and confess how she truly feels to him, but she protests, because she doesn't even have the right words. Harriet successfully convinces her by offering to help her with words. Lizzie shows her support and offers to handle their mother while Jane fights for her love. Hours later, Jane and Harriet arrive in London. They run into the house to meet the startled Caroline and Mr. Bingley. Jane confesses how she feels about Mr. Bingley. Her world came crumbling down after receiving the note he sent her in the morning, and she had to hurry down to London to let him know that she had completely fallen for him. Caroline rebukes her for being so inappropriate, while Mr. Bingley stands still with his head facing the ground. The ladies return home while Harriet comforts Jane, who is in tears. The following morning, Harriet wakes up disappointed that she's still in Austin's novel. She heads out later to join Mrs. Bennet in the garden, who appreciates her for going to London with Jane. Harriet gets emotional, hearing her accept her faults for desperately wanting to marry her daughters off, while forgetting that security and safety are the foundations of love. Harriet wishes she had a mother who would care about her happiness the way she cares about her daughters. Their conversation gets disrupted by Jane's scream, as they all rush to her room. She hands them a note, which reveals that Lizzie has run off with Wickham. Everyone gasps in surprise. Harriet assures them she will take care of the situation, and she quickly walks out of the room. Jane hurries after her to find out what she intends to do, and she reveals that the reason Lizzie didn't connect with Darcy is because of her. Collins proposed to Mary instead of Charlotte, and now Lizzie thinks she's in love with Wickham instead of Mr. Darcy. She blames herself that everything in the story is changing, while Jane looks at her speechlessly. Harriet assures her that she will handle everything as she runs away. She comes out of the house to meet Mr. Darcy rehearsing his apology. She informs him that Lizzie ran away, and she intends on getting married to Wickham, so she needs to borrow his carriage to go find them. Mr. Darcy joins her in the carriage immediately and directs the horsemen to his father's church. He suspects that will be the only place they would go get married. They arrive at the church just in time, and Mr. Darcy scolds Wickham for attempting to deceive a young lady into marrying him. Darcy offers him to name his price and be relieved of his debt. Lizzie scolds him for thinking money can equate to their love. Surprisingly, Wickham cuts her short and names his price, informing her that her dowry cannot compete with that amount. A shocked and heartbroken Lizzie runs out of the church, crying. Thankfully, Harriet is there to comfort her, but she apologizes to Harriet instead. She admits she was blinded to the truth, despite being a curious thinker. Harriet doesn't want her blaming herself, because Lizzie has taught her more than she will ever know, and all she is doing is simply to repay the favor. Mr. Darcy joins the ladies, informing them that their chariot is ready, and for the first time, Lizzie notices how good-looking he is as she puts her hand around his. Harriet congratulates herself for doing a good job with both of them. On the ride home, Harriet watches in pure admiration as Lizzie and Darcy connect effortlessly, both of them apologizing for misjudging each other unfairly. She sees the emotions of love and longing in their body language, so she decides to leave them alone. Later in the day, the girls are outside their house when Mrs. Bennett receives a letter from Collins. She screams on finding out that he's breaking off the engagement between him and Mary. Harriet assures the girls to let it be, because it's a very good thing, but they refuse to heed her advice and go with Mary, who runs into the house heartbroken. Their mother is worried sick about how they will go about with the restitution, since Collins cancelled the engagement. Soon they see Mr. Bingley and Darcy approaching their house. Mr. Bingley soon enters the house and requests an audience with Jane. The others hurry out, pretending to shut the door as they stick their head in between so they can see everything for themselves. Mr. Bingley apologizes for acting foolishly. He gets down on his knees, confessing love to her, then finally brings out a ring asking her to be his wife. Mrs. Bennet and her daughters excitedly hug each other and giggle in low tunes. She notices that Lizzie is not with them, so Harriet goes in search of her. 
While Mr. Darcy and Lizzie walk around the garden, he apologizes for projecting her indifference to him on Jane and Mr. Bingley. He didn't realize his words would have much effect on Bingley when he was dissuading his friend from marrying her sister. He reveals that he followed his friend down to their house because he also had some intentions of his own. He moves closer to her and asks her to be his wife. She happily accepts his proposal. Harriet, who has been searching for them, finds them kissing in the garden. She smiles to herself and turns back to go join the others inside. At night, the Bennett house is full of celebration as their daughters dance with their suitors. Harriet smiles, seeing that she has been able to successfully set the story on the right course. She goes to her room to check out the book gift she got from Mr. Darcy. She soon dozes off and finds herself back in the taxi she boarded on her way home in the beginning. As soon as the car stops in front of her apartment, she pleads with the driver to take her to her boyfriend's apartment but he refuses. She picks up her things and finds the gift she received from Mr. Darcy. Luckily, she sees a ride by the roadside and hops on it, heading straight to Ethan's apartment. On getting there, she clicks on the buzzer and immediately starts apologizing and accepting her wrongs for how she has been treating him. Ethan, who is out of the house, comes back home to see Harriet speaking into the buzzer. He hides himself and listens to all she has to say to him. The buzzer blares and informs her that she has reached the voicemail limit, and then she realizes that he's not even home. Harriet looks unhappy, and she sits by his doorpost awaiting his return. Ethan walks towards her with a smile on his face. On seeing him, she gets up and apologizes for her wrongs. She takes the apology a step further as she proposes to him. He accepts her proposal and kisses her passionately. She brings out the book with her and shows it to Ethan. He recognizes the copy as a first edition, and wonders where she got it, from seeing how old it is. Months later, Harriet publishes her book and reads it out to the hearing of her audience. Ethan cheers and applauds her, right from where he's sitting. 